Hi guys, um, welcome to my new video. In this uh, video, the topic is going to be what can you gain from the experience of working abroad? Um, a lot of my students actually work abroad. A lot of them are thinking about working abroad. Some of them want to stay uh, in the foreign country forever. Some of them want to come back to their home countries and uh, just apply the knowledge that they received. Um, but what, what is in common for most of uh, the students who work abroad, most of people, most, most professionals who uh, work abroad, is that 99% um, of them have a very positive experience. Um, I'm going to give you some examples. So I've uh, been teaching a few doctors uh, and nurses who are uh, now doing um, voluntary work or they're actually uh, working for a World Health Organization in Africa. Uh, so this is a very um, complex work, very responsible uh, work that they're doing. Uh, usually it's the prevention of epidemics in sub-Saharan African countries. Um, this, as they told me, this has been their dream for a long time. So they always wanted to help um, and they always wanted to, to um, work in developing countries. Uh, they wanted to help people in need. Uh, so this is something that they always imagined and that, that goal of um, helping others has led them to, to actually work uh, in, in these circumstances. So um, for those kind of people, if you are think if you're one of uh, those people who always knew that they wanted to work internationally and help people in certain parts of the world, then you just have to uh, put your um, efforts into um, acquiring all the documents that you need for applying for that working position. If one of those things is um, passing an English test, then you should think about um, how can you prepare in the best way to uh, pass, pass your test. I also have people who work on their PhDs. Um, for example, I, I have a student, she's currently doing a PhD work at Berkeley University related to um, archaeology. Uh, so she's basically um, comparing uh, Japanese archaeological findings to uh, Native American archaeological findings uh, in North California, if I'm correct. So she uh, was led by her thesis. She was led by her uh, wish to finish her PhD and that's why she's uh, now working in a foreign country. So if you're one of those students who are thinking of uh, applying for a PhD program or a master program abroad or an MBA, this is a great opportunity because this is a whole nother experience. Uh, I will talk about it in, in some of the future videos when you are uh, working within the university and you have all that support uh, from others. I also have a lot of students who work in international companies that have headquarters in different parts of the world and basically through the company they have like an annual uh, competitions that you can, you can apply for. Um, these competitions are for a certain positions in certain parts of the world so you can apply specifically for what part of the world you would like to explore and work in. So if you're somebody who works in a, in a big company and you know that uh, some of your colleagues have applied or, or they've gone to have this international experience, then you can see more into what kind of uh, things you need to pass this uh, application. Um, ultimately, what you can gain from working abroad is uncomparable to anything else that you can gain while staying uh, at the place where, where you are now. So it's a complete change, so your personality changes a little bit, you explore other parts of your personality that are uh, maybe not used as much because you're staying in your uh, comfort zone. Some people like to stay in their comfort zone and that's perfectly fine. Um, but for those who are thinking about just kind of uh, adding one more experience to their life, uh, then working abroad is, is a perfect opportunity. You can always come back. Um, that's one thing that I say to my students. If you go and try and you don't like it, you can always come back. 
I had uh, the opportunity to work with few extraordinary people who um, uh, planned their, their careers in a way that they have uh, applied for one position in one country because they knew that that position would lead them to a better position in another country. So this is again something that um, a lot of uh, a lot of the career-oriented people are focused on how can they advance in their career, how can they get to the point where, where they want to be. So um, if you're somebody who's very ambitious uh, and if you know that you have to jump, you know, over a few steps to get to where you want to be, uh, then, then you can think long-term and um, just carefully plan your steps. Uh, that will lead you to your success. The key thing is not to be afraid. Um, the more you think about it, the more you will be afraid. So if you are somebody who's on the brink of, you know, just going into that, don't think. If you already have an offer and uh, you're thinking of whether should I accept it or not, I always say go for it. Um, of course, if you if you uh, have have some family concerns or health concerns or something like that, then you should be more careful about making a decision. Maybe going to a country that's a little bit closer to your home country, not going that far, maybe across the ocean and into the completely unknown. Um, but ultimately, the the idea is to explore um, the world in a broader sense. So the idea is to meet people from different cu cultures and countries and uh, you can never really have that experience by looking at YouTube or you know watching National Geographic or any other program. Um, just kind of if you engage yourself and um, get into that situation uh, where you see a lot of different people having uh, a lot of different life experiences and you're all sharing it together uh, and of course working on something exciting if you're working on an international project that's even better um, so that's something that you can really not experience if you if you stay at home or ultimately um, you if, if there's nothing that you like about your for an experience and you're regretting why you actually moved to a different country and why you made this change, uh, there's always something to learn from this experience. You, can, you, you definitely learn what you don't like. You learn what kind of communication you don't want to have with your colleagues. You learned about what projects you don't want to engage. So this is ultimately going to help you uh, in your career anyway. So there is basically nothing uh, major to lose. There is a lot of different people um, in this world. So I, for example, for me, I always thought, you know, who cannot like New York? It's such a great city. And especially if you have the, the opportunity to live and work in New York, wow, um, you know, good for you. That's, that's a perfect thing. But then I had a few students who are actually um, there and they, they live in these luxurious apartments uh, paid by their companies and they, um, they live in the center of Manhattan uh, and they have free time and still they don't like it. So um, there is no right or wrong. It's definitely up to each person to decide what environment uh, m may be uh, good for them. So that's why I choose wisely. Um, for example, a lot of students have this uh, dream to go to Canada or, uh, you know, n uh, countries in, in Scandinavia, in north of Europe. Um, and really, uh, these countries are wonderful, but if you are really not into the winter time, especially if you come from like tropical countries, uh, you have to really research and see if this, um, you know, this, this, um, environment is going to be good for you because definitely it, it is a big change. Uh, and in the end, um, the last thing you should worry about is English because if you're going to an English-speaking country, um, you're going to improve your English anyway by daily communication, so the life is going to push you to speak and um, 
If you make mistakes, you will learn from them. Uh, I really don't know. I heard this from a lot of students uh, that there are people who don't appreciate pe other people speaking English with accent. So I never had that experience and for me this is a little bit uh, strange to even think about. Like who would n who would not appreciate a person because she speaks with an accent? Anyway, so just don't be um, don't be discouraged by uh, those people who may roll their eyes or not want to speak with you because you have an accent. Uh, those are usually people that have their own troubles. I don't know, uh, maybe they've had bad experiences with some people that had accents before. You know, it's their problem. So definitely that shouldn't discourage you to live and work in a foreign country. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there today. The internet is endless. You can uh, Google and research what's right for you. Or even better, if you have a recommendation from your friend, from your colleague, from your boss, um, then then that option may be even better for you. So anyway, this, this uh, is all that I can think about regarding this vast topic. I can probably talk more about this, but maybe in the, in the future videos I will focus on something more specific. But generally, uh, I, uh, I always encourage students to think about expanding their life by working and living abroad. So, and yeah, shout out to all my students who are currently all around the world. Um, yeah, bye. See you in the next one.